Okay, good evening, guys. Uh, we've got Mario Schattender here today. Uh, she is a physicist turned software engineer. She's going to be talking to you about right to left language support with her speech. Wait, what? <laughs> the twisted road to right to left language support. So hello everyone, my name is Moriel, I work for the Wikimedia Foundation, and I think right to left. And I really hope that after this lecture I can give you a little bit of a taste of what that means and why that's actually pretty important to have when you deal with software in general and web pages in specific. And maybe I can plant a little seed uh, in each of your minds that the next time you develop anything you keep that in mind. So let's you know, start with basics. What is language? All right, maybe that's a little too basic. Let's start with what is not language. So I have a bunch of characters on the screen and some more characters on the screen. Is this language? No, that is script. The above script is written from left to right, and the scripts below are right to left. These are just representing. They're obviously not the entire amount of scripts that we have in the world. Um, but what's special about scripts as opposed to languages is that languages use scripts and multiple languages can use the same script. So here we have Latin, Cyrillic, Hebrew, Arabic. There are multiple languages that use each one of those. Um, some of them we know, some of them we might not. But the important thing is that some of them are written left to right and some of them are written right to left. So why should we even care about this? Well, for one, when we think about right to left issues, we actually expose other language behaviors that can really make our software a lot better. A lot of those bugs are exposed through right to left support. The second reason is that right to left user base is actually growing. So this is a more or less representation of the bigger uh, right to left languages and the amount of speakers. And we have close to 800 million speakers in the world. These things, um, and they are getting into open source. They are getting into software. They're getting into the internet. We need to start catering a lot better to these uh, speakers. And this is just uh, an example. So in Wikipedia, these are the three top right to left Wikipedias and the registered users. So taking into account that these are only registered users, we have a lot more readers in those Wikipedias. But still, this is you know, pretty decent numbers. So what's the problem with right to left? Why are we even having you know, this such a challenge? We should just flip stuff and that's it, right? Not quite. So here's the issue here. When you are thinking about things as a left to right speaker, it's not just the way you speak or the way you write. Your eyes expect, your eyes are drawn to the top left part of the screen. You expect to see the beginning at the top left, which is why most websites have their logo at the top left of the screen. When you think in right to left, you think the opposite way. Your beginning point is the top right. So you think, backwards, or what we call forward, of course. So the script direction is not just about writing and reading. It's also where your eyes travel, what you expect to see, how you're defining the concept of before and after and start and end, what you expect from typing, and what you expect to have with your content. So let's talk a little bit about the history. What used to happen with right to left languages? So in the beginning, computer had no clue what right to left was. ASCII ruled, woo -hoo. And then the internet became popular. And I am paraphrasing for the sake of brevity. This lecture is already uh, doomed to twist your brain around, so I'm paraphrasing. Right to left websites sprung up, and we had to do something to support them. So what do you do when you have a computer that can only understand the concept of left to right, but you have right to left websites that really should present things from right to left, because that's how the language works? Well, it turns out you simply write everything backwards. Yay. So if you write everything backwards, the computer will look at it and say, well, I don't care what direction it is. I'll just display it as is. And you have right to left stuff. In fact, we used to have tools to do that for us. So we'd go online, have a flipper tool, write all our text in there, flip it up, paste it into our HTML pages, and everything worked great. Except, of course, word wrapping. Oops. And updating websites normally, you know, 
like, uh, on a regular basis. So like news websites that had to update themselves a lot really suffered from this. So something else had to be done clearly. But it wasn't just the web that suffered from this. So this is an Ubuntu bug. It's a screenshot from an Ubuntu bug from 2008. And I'm making it bigger, although I assume that most of you can't really um, understand whether it's backward or forward, so I'll just tell you this is backwards Hebrew. So the terminal displayed backwards Hebrew. Um, okay, well, that's not really very helpful. So we start arguing, what are we gonna do with this? Well, maybe we'll do what the internet's doing and write everything backwards. That seemed to work well for the internet. Yes, but it turned out that there were a bunch of um, uh, pieces of software that already had within them some sort of tricks to flip stuff. It's called bidirectionality algorithm, which we will touch on in a minute. So if we flip everything, it means that some of the software will display it properly and some of them won't. What are we gonna do? It's not going to be very helpful. So after lots of arguments, there is another bug in 2009 that simply says, you know what, we give up, just stop importing right to left language translations for the terminal, just give it up. Um, and that is more or less the case today. This is me trying to type something in Hebrew. Um, so this is what it's supposed to look like and it's backwards. So yes, this is the status quo today. So obviously, I mean, seriously, obviously, something had to be done. Cue the next solution, logical versus visual rendering. What does that mean, really? So here's the visual one. The visual one is what we just saw. Basically, this byte order is going from left to right. This means that we would have to flip the text, right? Someone had to flip this text. This is the way that we're supposed to see it, which means that if we want the first byte to be the ending, someone had to flip the text around. But then logical came by. And logical said, you know what? No, no, no. We're going to let you type the way you're used to typing, logically, like the language dictates. And we'll make sure that it renders backwards. Um, the computer will know that from this point on, ooh, this is a right to left language. I'll render it backwards, which practically solves uh, the problem, which is great. So remember these concepts of logical and visual because we will come back to them. So this was kind of you know, the beginning of the, um, uh, uh, of the solution. Initially, we had to tag web pages with whether or not it's logical and visual and there were special fonts and all that kind of stuff. Nowadays, it just exists, mostly because of Unicode. So I'm gonna fast forward, that was history a little bit, I'm gonna fast forward to what we have today. So let's talk about flipping it. We talked about the fact that the mental model is flipped when you, we, we think in right to left languages. What does that mean? So here's um, LibreOffice Impress, which I used to create this lecture. So we have here you know, the English interface, we have the slides on the right, if you can see the tabs, normal, outline, everything's great. Here's the same software, except it's in Hebrew now. It's, it's pretty much flipped, right? Um, you have the, now the slides on the right side, um, the tabs are on the right aligned. It's uh, um, fairly flipped. Um, we've seen this one before also. This is English Wikipedia versus Hebrew Wikipedia. Pretty much flipped. So everything flips. All right, I can finish the lecture and go home. But should it? Huh, well, let's take a look at things that maybe should not flip. Here is a little um, uh, screenshot from an image insertion dialogue from Visual Editor. Visual Editor is the tool that we use in Wikipedia now to edit articles in a what you see is what you get style. So I have, you know, position. I can insert the image, you know, left, right, center. I can have it wrapped, whatever. What did this, would this look like in right to left? Well, you know, let's start by flipping. We said flip everything, right? Here it is. This is the Hebrew version. I still have position. You can see that even the icon changed. Everything's great. Can you think, however, about what is the potential problem with flipping everything here? How about this? If we flip everything, then left would have been on the right, and right would have been on the left. That's not helpful at all. So we should, and in fact, we did flip it wrongly in the first place, and then we saw that we did, and we unflipped those buttons. But we did need to flip the position of the tiny icons next to the text because they need to be before the text in the beginning, right? So you just need to make sure that you flip correctly. But some things should not flip. 
Here are more toolbar buttons. So this is again a visual editor, but these buttons also appear in most word uh, processors. I'm talking about these buttons. I'll make them big for you. This is a redo and undo, right? What's going on here? Yeah, I know. Um, they're not really flipped, are they? Is this a bug? Well, let's think about this. When I type in English and I want to undo, what am I actually doing? I'm going backwards, right? I'm going backwards towards the left. So here's my undo towards the left, and here's my redo towards the right. Excellent. What happens when I do the same thing in Hebrew? Well, I type something, and now I need to go backwards. What's backwards in right to left? Towards the right, right? What's forward in right to left? Towards the left. So really, this is what we have here, right? Which means that not only did these buttons flip, they flipped twice. I know. We are only beginning. Now here's a bonus for you. What happens when we're a little bit too zealous in flipping stuff? So this is LibreOffice uh, list toolbar. Um, and this is in left to right. And you know, it gives me the list, the numbers, uh, indent, outdent. What happens if I flip it to Hebrew? It basically mirrors itself. That's wonderful, except it completely mirrors itself, which is really not helpful at all. So beware of these kind of things. And these actually happen a lot more than you would think. So really the solution here is to analyze your own interface, anticipate the problems, and most importantly, listen to your right to left users. They know, and they will spot these problems very quickly. So trust them. So these examples were mostly about, you know, if you have one direction, it's either left to right or it's right to left. But then we have a lot of cases where we need both in one page. What do we do then? Well, so in Wikipedia, we have an option. Let's see, I'm reading, you know, the English Wikipedia. But you know what? All the technical stuff, like all my preferences and, you know, the things that, um, the, the regular pages of like where to read stuff and all that like technical stuff, I prefer to read in my original language, and my, my, um, um, I understand it better, so I want to switch you know, the interface language. We definitely allow for that, but that would mean that if I use the Hebrew interface, now I have a bit of a, of, of a game between right to left and left to right, because Hebrew goes right to left and English goes left to right. So I have the content that remained left to right because it's English Wikipedia, it's English still, but all of my interface is now right to left. We also see this in software. So here it is again, LibreOffice Impress. English and Hebrew interfaces, but I write in you know, a different language in there. So we still have that concept of mixing directionalities according to the use. But then what happened you know, when distinguishing between what is your content and what is your language is not that simple. So here is my user page on the Hebrew Wikipedia, and I'm using a system for structured discussion, a kind of a forum. So I have the one where, the only difference that I did between those two images is one of them I'm using the English interface and the other one I'm using the Hebrew interface, but the content is exactly the same. I'm going to talk to you about which one's content and which one's interface, and to make it simple, I will color code them. So here it is, this is the title of the page, it is interface. It's flipped, that's great. Here, it is, here are the buttons that allow me to kind of control the page. So um, check uh, reverse order on newest topics, browse the topics, table of content, all that kind of stuff. These are clearly interfaced, they're translated. Excellent. This is obviously content, right? It's the content of what we write. It's aligned right to left, perfect. This is also content. This is a title of the discussion. Except this is an interface because it's the metadata. How many replies I have, when did it um, uh, get um, uh, posted, etc. Okay. This is also content. It is the text boxes that allows me to add content in. So clearly they should be in the direction of the content. Yes? Well, sure. But inside them, I have helpful tips. The placeholders. They should be in the language of the interface. That creates wonderful, wonderful bugs like this one, where even the text box has no idea what it's supposed to do now. <laughs> you really need to think about your interface. We are constantly arguing about this. Is this really content? Is this really interface? We don't know. Maybe yes, no, just 
figure it out the best you can, adjust as you go, because <laughs> some of those things are not that simple. Now, let's talk to one about one of my favorite subjects, typing. You may not have to, but I do, and your users do. So how does typing work, really, in right to left and left to right? So I have here two contexts, okay? I have English, left to right, and Hebrew, right to left. And to be very helpful to you, I even marked the beginning and the end. What would happen, though, if I flip those around, if I write Hebrew in English and English in Hebrew? Ready? That's what will happen. Huh. Okay, what happened to the question mark there? Well, the context itself, all it knows, it doesn't care what you typed. It doesn't care what the internal directionality of what you typed is. It knows that it is left to right or right to left. Its ending in the left to right case is at the right. So you wrote a question mark, and the context knows, the computer knows, well, question mark goes at the end. Where's my end? It's on the right. So here is my question mark. That is not entirely helpful. But the only solution to that is to teach computers context, context or use some tricks, which I'll show you in the end, at the end. Let's talk about numbers. So I have here English 123, and there's a reason why I'm saying 123 and not 123, and I'll show you in a second. And then I have Hebrew 123. Now, let's go to a helpful screen that I created just for you so that you can follow with me on the behavior uh, of these things. So I have Hebrew 123, and it's aligned right. It's a right to left text box. I'm going to put my uh, cursor between the one and the two. And I'm going to hit space. That's all I'm going to do. You can't see it, but I swear that's all I'm doing. What do you think will happen? Here I go. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to do the same thing between the two and the three. You see here where it's going, right? There we go. OK. That was weird. Um, is that the right behavior? Is this a bug? What? happened here? Well, here's what's going on. It's actually the correct behavior, even though most users, including right to left users, don't really understand why it happens. Because you don't expect it, but it's actually the correct behavior. So in most languages, including the right to left languages, numbers, especially com compound numbers, are still left to right. There are several exceptions, but they're very, very few, and I'm not going to get into them so that I won't explode your brain entirely. We're going to talk about the majority of cases where numbers are still left to right. So really what I have here is a general context, which is right to left. And I have two words, Hebrew, which is internally right to left, and 123, which is internally left to right. But the bigger context is right to left, right? When I put a space in between one and two, I created a third word. It's still in the same direction, but there's a third word, and then a fourth word. So if you think about them as words, then these words are absolutely correct. They go from right to left. Hebrew, one, space, two, space, three, from right to left. When they're combined, the numbers go from left to right, because they're numbers. This actually uh, creates a couple of issues when you know kids in middle school and, and, and lower grades when we write the exercise in Hebrew and then the number in English, and it can get really annoying. This also leads me to the Unicode bidirection algorithm. So I mentioned bidirection algorithm in the beginning, and now I'm going to give you a very, very general and quick primer. I urge you all, if this is interesting, uh, to go read about this. There's a lot more to it. But I'm going to introduce just the very uh, generalized uh, subject matter. So, the Unicode bidirection algorithm um, defines three types of entities, strong, weak, and neutral. Strong entities affect entities around them. Weak are affected by entities around them, and the neutrals are not affected, they just exist, they don't, do, uh, they don't care about anything around them. Usually, the strong ones are alphabet, the weak are punctuation and digits, and the neutral are white space tabs, etc., etc. So what does that mean? Well, let's graduate into advanced numbers. I have this sentence thing here. English, one, two, three. Notice that there are spaces in between those uh, digits. Hebrew, one, two, three. English. 
Now, let's say I take that word Hebrew and I replace it with an actual Hebrew word, so right to left Hebrew word. What will happen? How will it be rendered? I'll give you a hint. Here are the strong types. These will affect whatever comes after them. Here are the weak types. They will be affected but by, but whatever, by whatever is behind them. And these just exist. So let's see what's going to happen. Here's my sentence. Here's my word. I'm going to switch to Hebrew. Are you ready? Take a look. Did you catch that? Here's what you got. It makes no sense, does it? I know. Maybe it will make a little bit more sense now. So here's my English. It's left to right. The numbers after it, still left to right. But then I switch context to Hebrew. Now it's right to left. The numbers after it is actually right to left. They go in that order. But then I have English again, which is left to right. So this is actually correct behavior. On, uh, beyond that, we can actually see this here. I don't know if you can, yeah, I can kind of see that this is a different font than the other one, two, three. See that? Because the computer actually notices that I am in Hebrew mode right now. So it uses the, the other fonts. You can not see it in the web because on the web we use uh, the fonts are too similar to one another, but it's still the same kind of concept. So this is the Unicode bidirectional algorithm. Let's continue with our quest of typing. This is the US layout keyboard that most of us know and love. By most of us, I mean most of us love because some of us do not love it at all. Specifically, we have problems with these lovely um, pieces of the keyboard. So let's talk about the arrows first. Carrot movement. So let's take the same uh, sentence that we just worked with. And let's say that I'm putting my um, cursor at the beginning okay, of the sentence. And all I do is I hit this button, the go to the right button. What will happen? Oop. Let's do it together. So here I am. My cursor is all the way to the left. And you may not see it, but I promise you all I'm doing is I'm hitting the right arrow. Right, 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 right. Here I am. Yep, right all the way. Excellent. That was fun. All right, great. Okay, that was pretty straightforward. Now I'm going to shift, to hit shift, and then hit the right button. Okay, so we're going to select, not just move, select. Ready? I'm only clicking the right button. Right. Right, 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 what? Okay. I'm still hitting right. Right, 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 what? Yeah. Welcome to right to left. What happened here? So here's where we go back to those concepts of visual and logical. So here's what happened with visual carrot movement. It's visual, it's just left to right, that's great. What I see is what I get. But here's what's going on with the logical. I'm moving from the beginning towards the end and I'm starting to move right, right? But then the, uh, the logical, the, the computer recognizes that, hang on a second, I switch context now. Now I'm right to left, the, the next character is actually the beginning over there. So that's where it goes. But I continue going right, but it's continues going towards the end of that segment, and then it jumps again to the next segment. So this actually makes perfect sense, kind of. Except that means that this button is not go to the right, it go forward. I know. These are not the only problems we have on the keyboard. Let's talk about parentheses. Here is my open parentheses is my closed parentheses, and this is how it looks like in English. Great. What do you think it will look like in Hebrew? I'll give you a hint. I, I, I skipped the part where I call this the left parentheses and the right parentheses, and I just went on to say the open and close, which means that in Hebrew we actually have this because the open parentheses is for that way, and the closed parentheses is that way, which really, I don't know if you see it here, but let me make it very clear. This is the situation that you have. Yeah, I know. 
And if you think that's a problem, consider the fact that we have more parentheses on the keyboard, squiggly and square and brackety and bigger, bigger than and smaller than, which we use for HTML. Yes, it's so much fun. Here is the only solution we can really get this going. The only solution is to change terminology. Instead of saying left and right, if we work on anything that has bidirectionality, we have to start talking about before and after, backwards and forwards, start and end, left and right make no sense otherwise. And in fact, in the Wikimedia Foundation, we have OUI, which is our JavaScript object-oriented widget library. And in that library, you have a pop-up, and you can set it up, pop-up button widget, and everything is fine. And one of the settings that we have is a line. And we allow you to say a line forward, which means that if your website is left to right, it will be aligned towards the right. And if your website is right to left, it will be automatically aligned uh, left. Because we are using the different um, uh, uh, naming So here's a bonus for you. This is great. Emoticons behave more or less the same, except you tilt your head the other way. Except these emoticons, which don't work. So either I send my parents, I'm at work, greeny face, and then my mom calls me, oh my god, why are you sobbing? Or I send someone heart, and they wonder why I sent them scissors. Here's another solution. So here are a couple of tricks that we can do with things that usually are not that clear how to fix. So let's talk about control characters. Here's my username on Wikipedia. And if I type anything, like a response to one of the communi community members in Hebrew Wikipedia, then because of the fact that I have a parenthesis at the end, and a parenthesis is a type of punctuation, and punctuation is weak, right? Then it will go by the direction of the whole context, which is in, in this case is right to left, which means that the parenthesis will jump towards the left. That makes sense, but it's not very helpful. So what do we do? We also have control characters. So the first control character is embedding. I just put it before um, whatever I want to um, uh, embed the direction of, and there's LRE or RLE, depending on which direction you need, and it basically says this whole chunk, whatever comes after me until I finish this, that is left to right. We also have isolation. Put it at the end and say whatever came before me was actually left to right. And my favorite, favorite control character, the RLO, which is an override, which says whatever comes after, you make sure it behaves exactly like I want, right to left, so flip it. Which can cause really amazingly awesome behaviors. Have you ever seen an animated JPEG? So I started with animated JPEG. I actually did not fix that slide. I should have. Um, and then people were like, oh, yeah, there was an RFC once, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, you know what? <laughs> have you ever seen an animated BMP before? <laughs> I know, win. So here we go. We have an animated GIF, animated JPEG, and animated BMP. And if you don't believe me, let me turn it on. It's animated. I know. Yes, and look, it's .bmp. I'm not lying to you. How does that happen? Here's how it happened. This is actually the name of that file. And this is RLO. So the name is actually pmb.gif. But <laughs> But it appears as fig.bmp. Yay! And here is the lovely Python script that caused this to happen. <laughs> Thank you. So here's the funny part, too. If I look at this file in the terminal, here's what I see. I actually see the actual file name, pmb.gif, except I have no indication that there's something before the pmb the control character is completely hidden. So I will be very confused about why do I see this here and this here in the UI. I don't know why that happens, because this is presented normally, what? And if I add that image, which I did, to this um, uh, lecture with impress, I need to you know, open and insert the image, and the dialogue will show this. 
So it will show it flipped, but not only will it show it flipped, it will show it as if it's actually right to left. It will be aligned to the right, which, to be fair, is the correct behavior. But it's really not helpful to figure out what is going on in this thing. Yes. So starting to summarize, let's talk about the expectations of right to left users, or rather, the non-existing expectations of right to left users. When we work with languages and right to left stuff, really, we are inventing a wheel. There are so few pieces of software that do things right. For the most part, you have pieces of software that do some things right among them. Most of the behavior online and offline is really bad. It comes to a place where someone like me who actively works on right to left languages needs to take back a step back and not ask myself, what do right to left users expect, but rather, what is the correct behavior here because the expectation of the users are non-existent. Users expect things to break. So here is an example. This is me breaking Facebook. <laughs> um, well, not entirely, but a little bit. So this is a little bit mangled. Um, I'll try to explain. I have at and my name in Hebrew, Moriel. It starts here. This sentence is mangled. And then this is because, one, two, three. It starts with a word in Hebrew, OK? So this is in Hebrew mangled English, but it's actually happening quite a lot when we do uh, the other way around. So if I have my Facebook friend with a name in English and I want to say at Dave, how are you having a good, uh, are you having a good time in L uh, LCA? Let's meet up. And I write this in, in Hebrew. I start it, his name is in English, I write it in Hebrew and then LCA is in English, my entire sentence will flip around and be all mangled. Which is part of the reason why RTL users do not expect anything good to happen online. And this is Hangouts. So this is me testing out how to break Hangouts with uh, Ron. Hello, Ron, who's right here. So this is me sending Ron a message. And then again, this is my Hebrew name, my name in Hebrew, Moriel. This sentence is mangled because it starts with the word in Hebrew. And then I notice, wait a minute, that's not mangled. So oh, this is correct. This isn't Moriel. This sentence is mangled if there are a lot of Hebrew words and also numbers because it has more Hebrew than English. That was terrible, wasn't it? I know. Except he replied back, what are you talking about? That's not mangled at all. Because that is the way that it appears in mobile. It's not even consistent. <sighs> So, how much time do I have? I think I have enough time to show you very, very quickly. I talked about this before, how to write HTML. So, instead of writing HTML, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. Um, I, trust me, it's horrible, and I urge you all to test it out, but instead of writing, I have a snippet of HTML here. And this is HTML in left to right. There should be no problem with this, right? We all agree, yes? Great. I have a title and I have a, uh, um, you know, um, the, the, the actual text of the link, yes? Which one's which? What is this one? If I turn it into English, where do you think it will appear? Is this the title? It looks like it's the title, right? All right, let's test it out. Let's make sure I'm in English. Title, oh, huh, wait, what? Yeah, so what happened there, if I go back, is that I have these lovely characters, which we talked about before, right, at least on the parentheses size, are punctuation. And they are sandwiched in between right to left languages. So what happened to them? They flip. I know. They're awesome. Yeah. I have no solution to it. I like, you know. There is, however, one tiny thing. There's one one operating system that is the best in supporting right to left languages. And I will say it here, Windows. Yes, and I thought to myself, you know what, I'm gonna say it in LCA, and then two things will happen. I will be booed off the stage, and then two days later, Linux will be fixed. So please do the second thing. 
<laughs> Thank you. So right to left users are used to bad behavior because that's how computers work. When we deal these, with these um, questions, we really set the standard. We expose other interaction issues. We make our product better. We gain more participations from all over the world and improve our accessibility. It's challenging working on right to left, and it's brain twisting, and it's occasionally frustrating. OK, not just occasionally, but it's really important. And it's extremely satisfying. So I invite you to join us in RTL land. And I invite all of you to go to my new website, rtl.wtf, <laughs> which is RTL'd, so everything is aligned to the right. And if you get a headache from trying to read it, you can also click these lovely buttons at any point in your experience, and it will send you to ltr.wtf, which is flipped for you. Thank you. Out of curiosity, uh, did Windows ever get it wrong? And how long did it take them to fix it? You know, this is a weird question for me because even Windows is not, like, you know, there are lots of things that are not perfect. So for me to say, like, you know, did they get it wrong? Everybody gets it wrong. Like, there are just things that, you know, are just not there yet. But for the most part, from the very beginning, it was very clear that they have very, like, they put a lot of, uh, um, importance on supporting right to left. It was a lot easier. The Windows itself, you can install it in Hebrew. It was flipped properly. Um, there are things that are that are wrong. There, there are issues with the keyboard and Hebrew um, and Arabic have like fonts that sometimes. So Arabic needs needs to have like um, two two characters can combine to produce like a kind of different character. All these kind of things. Sometimes there are problems with that, but overall they have the best support. So n multiple times you said this is the correct behavior. Um, I mean, according to who and what, and you said that there's no expectations, but it sounds like that's what Unicode said, but did they get it right? Yeah. Um, Particularly the one, two, three, three, two, one example where you had the space. I'm like, that's completely ambiguous. So I, yeah. I feel like it can't be correct somehow. Well, yeah. So when I said that it, it is the right behavior, you're right. I went by Unicode. There are things that I could argue that Unicode is doing wrong. Um, in this case, because I was thinking about, you know, how would I make it work? And the problem is that anything else that you pick makes no sense in a different way. You know, if the numbers, <coughs> sorry, would not flip, then if you started to write a Hebrew sentence that included a number, that would go wrong, right? So you have to have some sort of logic to it. This is logic that does make sense when you know it. Um, Right to left users are so used to nothing that they just got used to it. And it works better in more cases, as far as we know. Uh, that's why I said it was right. But you're absolutely correct that you know, we are going by what we think maybe is correct. And we might change it, maybe. OK, so uh, one more question. Uh, you mentioned the arrow keys on the keyboard, but how about the backspace key? Aha, yes. Awesome question. I did not get into it because I didn't have time, but the backspace key is backwards. Um, also, you have back, backspace and delete. Um, they just go the other way. Another thing that I didn't mention is that the arrows with the movement, it also depends what context you're in inside the entire um, uh, text and what browser you're using, which is awesome. It's so helpful. They all behave differently now. Firefox has uh, settings that allow you to um, actually do the visual or logical differently when you select and all that kind of stuff. But backspace is basically going backwards uh, in the text, so it goes towards the right in uh, right to left. So the arrow on the backspace is not helpful, but the word backspace is just back. Yes, backs blah, backslash and forward slash gets with. No, so if you are, well, URLs you're writing in English. Although, right now, there are, I forgot what it's called, there is, um, um, yes, so you can have schemes in other languages and it transforms itself and you can do that and then the backslashes are really annoyed, annoying, it's seriously. Um, in Japanese, it's still fairly common for literary works like novels to be written 
top to bottom, right to left. Mm -hmm. um, especially in an age of ebooks and stuff, are people thinking also about top to bottom rendering? Yes, absolutely. So top to bottom languages are absolutely uh, being considered. Unicode supports some of them. Um, and in there too, you also have to think about top to bottom, right to left, or top to bottom, left to right. In the most part, um, at least the mental model, so the, the where you expect things to be are correct between right to left and left to right. The challenges are more, you know, going, uh, you know, top to bottom and, and those kind of things, so. Any more questions? Great, can everyone please give their hands together for Mariel and a fantastic Thank you. Time.